Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque Painting Live on Thursday, January 2nd at 7 Central Time, and this is Brenda. So Happy New Year's everyone. So we're looking at our Frosty and Friends um, pieces that were from our December Bisque Box, and I have an odd voice because I've been sick here for the last week and a half, so I have to apologize if I get into a coughing spell, we'll... Um, see how it goes, but I have got cough drops and water and took medicine and hopefully we get through tonight without too many issues. So we have our Frosty and Friends and this is what they'll look like finished. We have Frosty and we have Cuddled Up and we have our Jack. So that's what they look like finished. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. So with Jack we started out with our white bisque and then we color washed him with our navy that was diluted. Um, one part paint to two parts water and we wiped that off with a wet sponge and then we started dry brushing him so that this is where we left off at last time and then we have our putts which he also started out white and then we color washed him with with our um, that's the wrong one we color washed him with medium blue. We got to get rid of that one. So we color washed him with the medium blue and then we did some dry brushing with the white and we got him up to this point. And our cuddle up we haven't done anything with yet. So we will start with our um, jack. And I'm going to grab a little bit of paint and Let's see, we have our, he's pretty much where I want him for as far as his um, his white with the blue showing through. It's maybe 90% white and 10% of the blue showing through. And we'll go to our broom. And for our broom, I'm going to use the Goldenrod OS 491, our acrylic stain. And I'll just get a little bit of that. And I'm going to grab one of our Royal and Langnickel size 5 dry brushes. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my goldenrod and I'm going to brush it out on my paper because I want a nice dry brush. And then I'm just going to brush across, across my um, texture here. Actually, that's the wrong color. We need to start out with the um, with the brown. <laughs> so here we go. We'll, we'll, we'll back up a step. So for the broom, we're going to start out with the OS 471 medium brown. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> I don't think it's a cold medicine. It's just been a long week. Um, so we're going to, and I'm just going to use the same brush and work it in there and brush it out. So we'll just brush back and forth across the texture, get the broom handle, kind of doing my little C strokes to work it up to where the broom meets the snowman. So we'll grab a little brown and brush it out here. And you kind of got to turn them at different angles to get into those little crevices. So I hope everyone had a good Christmas. I hope you got a bunch of ceramic painting related Christmas gifts. Did anyone get ceramic Christmas related gifts? Paint or brushes or bisque? What was that? Oh, Cordy said we had some people gift the boxes. Yes, I had a couple... Um, People purchased the, um, this box to give as gifts for Christmas, so that was nice. So we're going to just keep um, building up our thin layers of our medium brown. We'll probably have about the 90% blue showing again, and or 90% brown and 10% blue. 
And I want to go across my texture. If you get a little bit on your snowman, that's okay. You can go back and touch it up. Um, so we're working on our January box, which is... What's the name of the January box? I lost my mind. <laughs> what is it? Oh, Penguin Party. Oh, my goodness. I'm losing it tonight. The Penguin Party. Um, so we'll be packing those this weekend, and sh they'll actually be um, logged in for shipping on the 5th, and then the post office will be coming and picking them up on the 5th, 6th, the Monday the 6th. I don't know that we'll know exactly what time they come, but Courtney will have a, um, um, she says between 10 and 2, so by then you should probably have your tracking numbers um, emailed to you, I would think. Um, I didn't take off Monday because we're doing it this weekend. Um, we have a couple boxes left that can ship yet on Monday if there's anyone out there that wants the January box yet. Um, otherwise, we'll, there will be more, but it will be towards the end of the week before there's more ready to ship. Um, it's a pretty fun little pieces. I like the stack. And then the little the little ones with the birds are cute, too. I was going to do a bluebird and a cardinal, but I put the rust on the bluebird, and so he ended up being a cardinal. And then um, I kind of would have needed the rich blue, which would have meant adding a color, and we were trying not to add colors because I know everyone has the Christmas budget that's probably blown, and we didn't want to add new colors, so they're both cardinals. So I'm just dry brushing my brown on here, building it up. So you can look forward to those um, towards the end of the week. Next week, we'll um, not everyone is going to have their box probably by Thursday. We have a couple um, that take a little longer, so we'll actually finish up this box on Thursday. Um, we'll do cuddle on Thursday, and that'll give everyone a chance to have their box come before we start it. So it actually worked out good the way it did here. So I'm just doing my C strokes, rubbing that brown in there, getting the top. We've had cold weather, wet weather, warm weather. It's been kind of crazy here. We have had snow. We've had ice. Um, Courtney doesn't have much snow down here. I, I have quite a bit by me yet. Courtney said hers melted yesterday, but I have quite a bit up in Shano yet. You had rain. You had rain. So, um, I think that I've seen flooding somewhere. Oh, Alcanto. That was a little bit east of me. They had flooding because there was rain. I don't know what the weather is for the rest of the week. I haven't looked. I haven't had time. i um, trying to get the bisque all clean now and fired and ready to sh um, box up on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm just grabbing a little more of our medium brown. I want it more browner. I don't want to see quite as much blue through it yet. I did start pouring the February box, which is, um, we don't really have a name for it, do we? It's going to be some birdhouses and birds. Maybe we'll call it Feathered Friends or something like that. Um, so Courtney asked what brown I'm using. I'm using the Duncan OS741, the medium brown. And I just want to get that on most of this broom. So we're going to try to get ahead of schedule here with the new year, but we'll see how that goes because we don't have the March molds yet. So we'll be ahead for February, but then we might end up being a close call for March again. Oh, 
still working on hopefully doing this full time once spring gets here, which will provide more time for all of this and more video time and a more local class time. More time to get the boxes ready well ahead of time. Huh? Clone yourself. Cordy says I have to clone myself. She's at her and my sister both have helped clean, and neither one are crafty ladies, so it has been a great help to have them both. Yeah, um, including painting. <laughs> and they both did a good job. I don't know how well they liked it, but they did it. So I actually haven't signed up for any craft shows for next year. I'm debating that situation yet. We may have our own craft show open house instead of dragging everything around and doing that. We'll see once the time comes. Already says she's craft showed out. So I got that medium brown pretty much where I, pretty close to where I want it. It's covering about 90% of the broom in the handle. And now we will grab a little bit of the light brown. So I, mean, I have the OS467 light brown. And it'll just take a little bit because we're just going to highlight the handle of the broom a little bit. So I'm just using the same brush again. That gives us a nice gradual change of color and I'm just going to go across my texture on my broom handle nice and lightly. And that'll highlight our broom handle. And let's see, that looks like that's part of the broom up there, but here's some broom handle by his hand. And you can highlight it as much or little as what you, you'd like. So that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm actually going to switch back to our um, OS491, our golden rod for our... Um, the broom part of the broom and I'm just going to use the same brush and work the golden rod up in there and then just brush back and forth and get it out and now we can highlight our broom with our broom color. Again I'm going back and forth across my texture. If you go with your texture you're going to lose that shading that you have. So you want to go across it. And we want to get on the back side and across the top. And just back and forth, back and forth. Nice light layers, just keep building it up. Um, it was blue. It was the white color wash with the blue. Whoop, that's a little too thick. I gotta brush my brush out here and brush that out. So we'll be probably having a planning day here in October for our boxes for the rest of the year. We have the themes picked out. We just have to pick out the molds. Um, let's see what else we have. All the Extras are picked out for the boxes, the main extras. Um, we have to order um, the brushes that are for the second half of the year. Well, Courtney's going to let me show you something. Finally. So I'm just brushing back and forth with my golden rod so I can get that nice yellow looking broom. So this will be our extra that is in our February box. It's a full palette of the metallic rub-ons. So that's a really big extra. There's a um, big 
Um, the retail value is more than what we usually try to put in, but we wanted, this is all I could find for the rub-on, rub so we're um, just adjusting the box a little bit, and we're able to provide this in the February box. So it's the uh, metallic rub-ons. We have blue, purple, copper, silver, ruby, emerald, and gold. Um, this is what what I wanted to get, but it's by Doc Holiday, and they don't produce them anymore. Um, so that, and it's a silver. It's this is the silver. It's just a nice little pot, and you just rub your finger in there and rub it on your piece. So since they don't produce them anymore, this is um, what we were able to find, and it'll work. It'll work just as well, and you'll have um, the variety of the colors. Um, I like the silver and the copper. Are probably my favorite colors. Oh, yep, little goes a long way. So you'll have plenty left over. Um, we'll probably be doing the copper on the birdhouse roof and then on the birds, one set of birds and maybe the silver on the other set of the birds. And then the sides of the birdhouse, I'm thinking of doing a marbling technique, but I don't want it to get too busy. So I'm still deciding on that yet or not. So there'll be a set of cardinals in the box and a set of um, chickadees, and then there will be two birdhouses. And then the big extra is that metallic rub-ons, and you'll be able to use those on other projects. I use those on a lot of different little things, angels, um, Christmas ornaments, um, the little pickup truck ornaments. I've used it on the grills. So it's a pretty handy little product, and it's um, got a good value to it. So you guys are definitely getting your money's worth on that box too. So, <laughs> Cordy says actually every box, yeah, we've we're always over budget just a little bit, but rather have it over budget than under budget. So I'm just doing my little um, C strokes and going across my texture to get my broom nice and yellow. You can see there's not much blue left on it anymore. But there's still enough there to give it um, the darker accent. And it has that wintry look to it with the blue. So that's the February box. So that'll be a lot of fun to do. And then we have to, we have the theme for March, which is Easter, I believe. So we're looking at a couple different Easter things. And then I think the one after that is for the is fairy garden type stuff. And then I think the next one might just be garden. And then I think we're already into July, which will be a the Christmas theme, which we'll we'll have a whole year in at that point. That one's jingle in July. And it's going to be called Jingle in July. So that'll be a lot of fun. So that's our um, broom looking pretty much like a broom. So we can probably call that good. And then I think I highlighted it a little bit yet with our um, Doc Holiday Daffodil, DH01 -DH Daffodil. Kind of hard to see with the camera, but there it is. And I'll use my same brush and just work that in there. So we try to use different um, techniques in the boxes and different products just to give you guys um, different opportunities to use different things. Oh, we have chalk coming in one of the boxes. Um, we're ordering that. We have to order that. Um, it's in the cart. We just have to submit it. We have that all worked out with our dealer. So that'll be a, um, another fun um, product that you guys will be getting another super value as far as the value of it I think that's going to be in the Easter box and we are did order extra of the rub-on metallics as well as the chalk so those will be available on our um, website too Brenda's brush strokes and bis.com I hope you guys can hear me because I kind of got a weak voice today I'm just dry brushing this 
um, daffodil, just giving it a little more of a highlight. So each time you're adding more color, like now I want to, I'm going to add less of the daffodil than I did of the goldenrod because I still want some of that goldenrod to sh come through, and I want the daffodil to be more on just the high the high parts, like a highlight, like this light is touching it. So that's about all that that needs for that. Then we can go to our rust. Um, so we have our Doc Holiday DH28 Rust, and we're going to put that on the nose, the carrot nose, and on our little cardinals. And since the yellow is kind of in that rust family, I'm not even going to change brushes. I'm just going to dab it in there and work it in. And I like the rust as a base, base for my reds, so we're just going to... Um, dry brush our little birds red, rust, so we can get that red on them. It helps the red cover better. It doesn't take as many coats if you use a rust underneath the red. And again, I'm just going across my texture. Can you use any orange or just like that one? Um, Cordy asked if you could use any orange or just the rust. I like the rust better than an orange. It's a little bit deeper of a color. If you want your red really a bright red, you could use the, use orange instead of rust. I'm just going across my texture and doing some little C strokes. Getting my birds kind of rust colored. Letting the navy down in the crevices because that's your shading. Courtney asked if you could have base coated them black. Yes, you could have. That would just have been another um, step, though. Because once we get all this rust on them and red, you're hardly going to see any of the blue. And it kind of just gives the whole piece a nice wintry look with that blue, because blue is a cool color. Although I guess you could say black is a cool color, too. And cool, meaning when you look at the color, like on the color wheel, it's a, considered a cool color. So when you look at it, it has a cold, colder feeling to it compared to like a red or an orange or a yellow, which has a warm feeling to them. So we're just going to get a little more rust on there. And then we're going to come to our little mittens and we're going to dry brush those with our rust. Be a little bit careful on the cuffs so I don't get rust all over the orange. If you do, you can go back and touch it up. So red, red is almost always a harder color to get, um, to be actually red, even with the glazes, although the glazes have improved a lot over the years. It used to be the red would come out gray or just ugly and not really red at all but it's got the it's gotten better formulation over the years but you still can have it come up kind of strange sometimes what is glaze? Is it glass? Is it glass? so courtney asked what is glaze um what's it made of? there's different chemicals in it there's probably some glass in it um, some probably has some clay in it too. I'm not sure. The underglazes have the clay in it. It's a liquid clay with colors. It's got color pigments in it. I don't know exactly what they are. Kind of drawing a mind blank here. What are the crystals, the crystals in the crystal glaze? I would say those are more of a, a type of glass. I'm not sure though. So we got that one pretty good. Now we're going to switch over here to the other one and let that one dry. Any questions on there at all? Cordy says it's quiet tonight. 
everybody's happy too much happy new year's which is fine because the videos are saved so you can always go back and watch them and it's probably a big day i know the kids here was their first day back in school after being off so it's probably a lot of getting back in the routine of things here today Courtney says she's out of routine. I know I was off yesterday, but had to work today and tomorrow. So I'm just working my rust in into my mittens, up to my snowman and up to my broom. Just kind of doing little little C strokes so that I don't get the rust all over my white snowman. But what I do, I'll go back and touch up. Now we'll let those mittens dry and we'll come back up here to the, our, our birds and get them a little bit rustier yet. I see um, Clay Magic released a new mold yesterday. It's a sloth. Looks like I don't know how big it is. I didn't actually click on it to see how big it is, but he looks like a cute little animal. They did a good job on him. Um, Courtney said it reminds her of the hedgehogs. I thought the same thing when I seen him. Um, he's cute. Yep, the hedgehogs are cute too. So we'll get a little more rust on there, and we'll come back to our gloves and get a little more on there. So the better, more even of a coverage you have of this rust, the more even your red is going to um, cover. We've had lots of fog here last week. It was terrible. We had wet, heavy snow what, the day before yesterday. Or was it the day before that even? Monday. Mon Monday, we had lots of heavy snow, really wet and heavy. Made a mess. Yep, made a mess. <laughs> so that's looking pretty good. You want to look at all your pieces from different angles. Like you want to get, make sure you get the back of his tail back here and the back of his head. And now we'll grab our real red. It's our um, Duncan OS483 real red. And again, I'm going to stay with my same my same brush because it's got that same family in it, and it'll make a nice gradual change. From the rust to the red, brush it out good. Brush across my texture here. Let's see what else is going on. I guess it's quiet here too. And we didn't even go out. We had to do inventory. <laughs> Courtney says, yeah. So I'm just brushing my real red across my texture of my birds. Courtney says the paint brushes are a pain in the butt to count. I'm glad I brought what I had left over. I don't have to count them. You did. <laughs> Well, slip boxes are pretty easy to count. So I'm just working my real red onto my cardinals here. And I will let them dry and we'll go to the mittens. Oh, and we forgot, I forgot to put that rust on his nose as long as I was in the rust. So we'll have to go back and do that. So I'm kind of doing nice little C strokes. So I'm going across my texture. 
So C stroke is just like you were writing the letter C. You're just doing little C strokes, but I'm just doing them real fast. Hmm? And you can go upside down or top side down. And I got a little red on my snowman, but that's okay. We'll go back and um, touch that up. Still working on a few holiday orders to get done yet. And I need a little more red. new tires on my vehicle so I don't have trouble driving in the winter here. And now we'll switch over to our other mitten so that one can dry. Yep, the rust really um, helps the red cover one of the best things I learned from our local shop lady. Otherwise, it seems like you have to put um, the red forever and ever and ever to get the, the red red. So I just keep turning them and doing them little C strokes, building it up. Getting a little bit at a time. And we'll come back to our birds and get some more red on them. I can see a little bit of rust through them yet. So is there anyone working on Easter projects? I know I've seen a few people are working on Easter projects already. I'm not even through Christmas yet to be working on Easter. But, yep, um, Cordy says we have a lot of, we did get a lot of good Easter molds last year. We'll have to try to get some of them poured in on our .com page. So I'm just building up our red on our mittens here. Kind of want to get that down in there just a little bit further. There's a little too much white there for me. And you want to get behind the mitten there. Um, the broom colors were medium brown, light brown, goldenrod, and then daffodil. We'll just keep building up our red to the degree of red that you want it. And I think I want a little more on this mitten here. I can still see the white, a little more white than I would like to see right in the crevice there. Kind of the tip of the glove. Just work it down in there. And we'll get some more on the back here and look at our birds. So that's looking pretty good. Get a little more on those birds. And then I got to go back and put some rust on the nose. And I think I'm actually going to just paint the rust on the nose. I don't want to get it all over the um, white on the face. So I'm just going to use the rust. And then I have... Um, I have one of my little round nylon brushes here. I think it's a size 5 Royal Lay Nickel Nylon Brush. 
And I'm just going to paint out my um, rust on the nose. If you want, you could dry brush it, but I don't want to get it all over the white. So I'm resting my piece on the on my hand, but I have my hand rested on the table so that it's not moving around. And then I'm resting my painting hand on my piece so it's kind of steady. And we'll just work it down in there to the little crevice. Well, we did, we have a new thing that we're doing with the box starting next month is um, besides the colored flyer, I typed up, um, wrote up instructions um, like like we did for the vintage Christmas tree when there isn't a flyer available. Um, so besides having your colored flyer, you will also have um, written instructions that you can refer to in case you don't have, I guess, internet or... Um, it's easier for you to read in the instructions than to follow along um, visually. We had a couple requests for that, so we're going to have the um, basic written instructions. Um, they will only be provided in the subscriber boxes. They won't be published anywhere. Um, so you can look forward for that in the February box. It will be in the cellophane container where the flyer and stuff is right you just add it in the, with the content package with the inventory sheet so um, so you'll have written instructions in there too so we have that painted out I'm just going to wash my brush out and now we're going to go to our black I got some black. So I just have my Duncan OS476 black. And now I'm actually going to paint out my um, black hat. And I'm just using that same um, round brush. And I'm just going to butt it up to where the hat and the snowman's head meet. And again, I'm resting my piece on the table, and I'm resting my painting hand on my piece so it's nice and steady. And you could use a liner brush for this too if you um, didn't want to use such a big uh, round brush. Liner brush would be good, and then you could come back with your bigger brush. Doesn't want to get in there, so I'm going to get a little more paint. And then you want to paint that out. You don't want any ridges. I'm just bringing my black right up to my snowman's head. And then I'm brushing it out. And you could have also dry brushed it black, but this goes a lot, a lot quicker. And we'll just keep turning and going around. You just want to make sure you make sure you steady your piece, and then you steady your hand on your piece. 
That'll make it easier to get your straight line. And I'm just resting this fourth finger on the hat. And I'm drawing the paintbrush towards me. And there we got our rim all lined out. And now we want to bring it up to our broom. If you're not comfortable with such a big brush, go ahead and use the liner and then come back with the bigger brush. And you have to turn it so you can see different angles. And then we'll get the top here. I'm just bringing it right up to the broom. And then we'll brush that out. And we'll get the back side. And then you want to line them up where they meet. Now I have it a little bit higher in the back than the front, so I'm going to make the front a little bit higher too. That way it's not obvious that one is higher and one is lower. Alrighty, now we can just brush out our black on our whole hat. And I need a little bit more. Excuse me. And you want to brush it out kind of carefully so you don't splatter black all over your white. And we'll come back and put rust on the band, but you don't have to line it out both times. We'll just line it out the one time with the rust and the red. I'm going to grab a cough drop here. I got a tickle coming. I feel it. I'm just going to brush out our black on our rim, top and the bottom. Like I said, you could, could dry brush this, but it, it just goes a lot faster to get it. Just do it black and be done with it. And I need some more. You just want to brush back and forth so it's nice and smooth. No spots, no ridges. And we'll do the top. Okay, so he's got a nice black hat there now. And we will grab our putts and do the same thing. And I'm just going to anchor him on the table. And I start out at the edge and I merge towards where the hat and the head meet. That way I can tell where I want to be. And again, I start out in the rim and merge towards the head. Just 
Start in the rim, merge toward the head. That way it's easier to line up your lines rather than trying to start right where the line is. If you start in the black and then merge over, you can gradually see where your black is. And we're almost all the way around already. And we want to meet these two up. That's good right there. And then we'll brush this out. Try not to splatter black all over. And I'm just gently painting back and forth. I need a little more black. No, he has the metal hanger in his hat. If you don't want that, you can snip that off with a wire snips. And you won't see it for the most part. If you don't want an ornament that hangs. And there we got his hat all done. There he goes. We'll set him aside so he can dry. And then we'll come back and look at our frosty hat and get the little white fleas that showed up. They always got to join the party late for some reason. Yeah, it must like not stick there and then it, <laughs> Courtney don't like them. She don't know where they come from. And so I have black paint all over my hands, so I got black paint on my white. No, it's okay. Wash them off here. We can fix that up when we're all done. But now I'm going to take my little liner. Let's see. Yeah, I just let it dry. Otherwise, it'll keep smearing more. So now I'm grabbing my um, Royal Majestic 5 0 um, liner, 4595. And we want to do our eyes. And I want to put some black lines in, in our carrot. And we want to make our little cardinals look like cardinals. So I'm going to go into my black paint. And I'm putting my brush in that paint. And I'm turning it clockwise between my two fingers. It helps load that liner up. And then I'm drawing it towards me to get a nice little point on it. So now we're going to um, make his eyes black, the bottom I need a little more paint there. So I'm going at about the 10 o'clock. I'm starting in the eye, and then I'm going to merge out to my edge so I can see where I'm going. And I need a little bit of water. That's a little too thick. So I just stuck my brush in the water, and I put it into the paint, and now I'm working that water into the paint so it's a little bit thinner, so it flows a little better. So we'll come back here at about 10 o'clock on the inside and then draw it out to the outside to get to that line. And now you can see it's flowing a lot better. And now we'll go from about 2 o'clock and join it up. And you don't want to worry so much about the inside of the eye. You want that outside line nice and smooth because the inside will be covering up with paint. So I'm just going to... Hmm? Courtney's going to move the... Adjust her down here a little bit. I can't see what your tablet in the way. 
<coughs> oh. So I got my paint in my black. And I'm just going to start over here at the 2 o'clock and bring it around. And then I'll come over here at the 10 o'clock and start in the eye and work out to the outside so I can get that line lined up where I want it. Meet those two up and kind of fill it in. And that looks pretty good, so we'll let those dry. So I'm going to go through my black, and I want to give him a couple little black lines on his carrots here to give it a little bit of character. And you can see where there's little indents in the carrot, in the carrot, and that's where you can put those. So I'm going to go in my water again and get a little paint and mix the paint and water so it flows kind of good. So now we have to do our little cardinals. So they usually have a little um, line that comes across off the corner of their eye and then it comes to their beak and then it comes down to a little point under their beak and then it comes back up to the other eye and it just goes across the top. And if you need, you can look, look, like look at a picture of a cardinal um, for reference. So I'm just going to start off the eye, come just below it. And then come down just a little bit under the beak there. So it gets that peak peak that they have. And now I'm going to go back to the corner of the eye and come up over the eye. And then I can fill the eye in with the black. And I'm going to take it right to the beak. And now I'm going to come over the top of the beak and match it up with the eye. This way? Yeah. Okay. So I just brought the black line over the top of the beak over to the eye. And then the one underneath here, I think I want to just straighten it out a little bit. And then we got to look on this other side. So we have to bring that, it's a little awkward, but you have to bring that black line across the beak to the other side here. Hmm? So I'm trying to see it, plus we'll have you guys see it. So I have to join up that on the other side there. So I'm going to come up. Pick up where it come across his beak and come up over his eye and then come down and then make that peak that they get, that point, that mask. And come where the beak is and bring, just bring it down because they have that po um, point underneath their beak. And now we can fill in his eye. And I want that to come just a little bit further back. Hopefully you can see that. So now he's got his little mask on. And now we got to do the other one. So I'm going to come across his little beak. And then come up over his eye. And then come off the eye and get that little point that's over there. So he's got his little point, and I can fill this in. So now we want to get under 
Um, this guy's beak, so he has his nice little point. So I'm just going under the beak and drawing it up to the eye and joining in it with the peak, the point that goes past his eye. And I think I want that just a little bit longer. And I got to bring it up to his beak here. And maybe bring the other one down a little bit. And then we got to turn him and we got to do the other side. Okay. So I'm going to join up his beak here again from the other side and come up over his eye. And then you want that little point. And then you want to come under his eye again and join that point up. And then this can actually all be black because his eye is in the black. And they kind of meet up there, so. And now I won't just want to look at him from the top down so my, that my beaks I'm looking at it from the top down here so I can make their the width that comes across the beak the same on both sides. Kind of the same thickness. And it looks like I gobbed him all over here, so we'll scratch that off. And his looks pretty good as far as the width. This one looks like it needs a little bit of roundness to it. It's too square. So it looks pretty good for their beaks. Well, actually, their black part. It's not really their beaks. Now we'll actually do their beak, and I'm going to use the same brush, and I'm going to grab some of the rust, and I'm going to... Um, touch the rust on their beaks. So you're looking like they're little lovebirds here. Cool. Make their little beaks look rustish. rustish. And you kind of got to turn them around to do that. And then on the back side, you really can't see their beaks at all. So we're going to just have it on the front. I just want to give them just to bring it in the here just a little bit more and then touch it up just a little bit more so it's no black coming through and now they got nice little rust colored beaks and they have their nice little black masks on <clears throat> so there's your little cardinals and we'll take and I got black on my um, red there, so I'm going to get some red. And I'm going to wash out my liner brush. And I'm just going to touch my liner brush in the red and just touch that up a little bit. And then you can look if you need to touch anywhere else up with the red. 
And it looks pretty good. So we'll wash that out again. And now I'm going to take some white. Actually, we'll do the white last because we'll do our go back to our um, snowman eyes. So I'm going to grab some medium blue. And it's the OS um, 7, OS 457 medium blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of that, of that on my paper, my foil. And I'm going to dip my brush in my water and thin this out a little bit so it's a little bit more inky. It'll be easier to flow for doing the eyes. And then I'm turning it clockwise in between my fingers and loading it up, drawing it to a point. And then I'll paint it out again. So now I'm going to take my medium blue and go in my eye. Actually, that's wrong. I need white first. I'll have to back up a step. So we'll go back to our white, get some white, and do the same thing. Just thin that out a little bit with the water. Just a drop of water is all I did on the brush. And that draws that right to a point. Now I only want a little thin line of black for the, for the outline of the eye. So I'll start up like at my 10 o'clock and uh, merge over towards the outside of the eye. Just so I have a nice little um, black outline. And then we'll come on the other side and start at uh, 2 o'clock and bring it down and join them up. So you can see there's just a little bit of black left now for the outline of the eye. And now we want to make this one kind of match that one, the thickness of the black. So we'll start about 10 o'clock and draw it over to the outside. And we'll grab a little more white and come over here by the 2 o'clock. Start more into the black of the eye and draw it out towards the outside so you get to how thick you want that black line left. And I need a little bit of paint there. So now that the black that's left as the outline is about the same in each one. Looks like I need a little more white on here. It's kind of um, faded out. And we'll add a little more on this one too. So they look fairly even, so I'm going to wash out my little brush. I'm going to go into my blue that I already thinned out before and load it up by turning it clockwise through my two fingers, and then I'll draw a point on it. It looks scary. Yeah, they usually look ugly before they look good. <laughs> so now we're going to start about in the 10 o'clock again, and we're going to draw out to the black line. And we'll let just a little bit of white and bring it around. And we'll start over here at the 2 and or 1 o'clock and bring it around. Let some of the white on the bottom. Don't worry about how ugly the top looks. We're going to cover that up with black. Well, thank you, Cheryl. So we're going to come over here to the other eye, and we're going to start like in the 10:30, 11 o'clock. Start in the eye with the blue and draw it out over to the to your black outline. Leave some of your white about the same amount that you have on the other eye. 
And uh, we'll turn them and we'll go to about the one, one o'clock, two o'clock. Start in the eye and draw it out towards your outline. Let a little bit of the black, let some white. And then you can fill that in a little bit. So I want that to come down just a little bit further. It's kind of high. There we go. So now when you look at it, you want to see it that the blue on this side is about at the same height as it is on this side. And then on the inside, it's about at the same height. And it looks, looks pretty good. And this blue is a little bit light, so I'm going to come in here and add a little more. And I'm going to wash out my brush. And now we're going to go to the black. And I think I need a little water in there. We're going to just thin that out a little bit. It's kind of like ink more than like paint. So I'm turning my brush in my hand clockwise. I'm drawing it to a point. Um, Courtney asked, what is the ratio of paint to water? Um, um, it's probably less than 50-50 water, as I'm just getting a drop, a drop on the brush and then adding it to the paint. Um, so now I'm going to um, go up to the point of my eye, because he's got a point, and then I'm going to draw my outline, and then I'm going to come into my blue, and I'm going to loop it down again. So you're going to leave some of the blue. And then we'll go to that point and come the other way and join it up with the other black. And then you can fill that in. Oh, he looks a little um, zigzaggy it is, so we need to straighten that out a little more. So the inside amount of blue is good, but the outside isn't. So I want to bring it down and um, get a nice rounded look instead of the jagged look. So we've got that one. Now we'll come over and do the other one. And I'm going to go up into my point and come down to my blue. And I'll go up into my point and come down the other side and line up my blacks. And join up letting some blue again. And sometimes you got to turn them around to get them so you can get it the way you want it. So now my inside blue looks really nice. It's like nice and narrow, but then it's kind of wide and crooked there. So we're going to grab a little bit of black and we're gonna make that more of a teardrop. Just more rounded like that. So then you want to look at them and see if they're kind of even. So he's got a dip right here. I don't like that. So I'm going to just grab a little paint and start in the black and draw it towards me so I can cover that up a little bit. So that's a little better. He's got a little dip on this side too. So we'll see if we can fix that one. And you, you do want a really good liner when you're doing eyes or you're going to be really frustrated. So now the blue on this side is just a little bit higher than the other side. So I'm just going to get a little, take a little bit of that point off of there. So it ain't so sharp like that there. So now he looks okay. So I'm going to wash out my um, black. And I'm going to just go into my white kind of swirl it around and get a nice little, um, so there's like a little dot of the white on it. And we're actually going to um, just touch each of the top right of the cardinals. And this is where that ball stylus will come in really handy, and that's an extra in our February pa package that's coming out. The February box will have the ball stylus, and that's where you can use those. That way you don't have to worry about um, having different size eyeballs. 
highlights because there's different sizes in the packages and whichever one you use, um, big or little, it'll just make it a lot easier than doing it with the brush because you can get them different um, sizes with the brush. So now I'm going to um, drag through my white, but now my white's a little th thick, thick again. So now I just dip my brush in there and there's just enough water on there that it thinned it out a little bit again because it's what's been sitting here. So I'm just going clockwise, dragging it towards me and loading it up. And I'm going to take a little bit off. Now I want a nice little C stroke in each eye. And you want to do it either both on the left side or both on the right side. If you do one on the left and one on the right, he's going to look cross-eyed. So I'm going to put them both on the right. I'm going to start in the black and end in the blue. I don't want to go into the white because then you won't see it. And if you don't want to do this, you can just put a dot in there. So I'm going to put pressure down, and I'm going to pull it towards me, and then lift up so I get a nice little skinny line. And then we'll do the same thing here. Push down, pull it towards you, and lift up. And now I'm going to go into my white and get that little swirly on the end so I can get a nice little um, dot. Again, this is where the ball stylus is coming really handy you can get them the same size then. So now he's got two little eyes and your little bird's got eyes but we have to do this side of the, for the birds too. I forgot about the back side of birds. So there's not a point on there. I gotta twirl it and get my little point. So now our little birds got their little eyes. And then I'm going to look at it and I want a little bit more white on there. So I'm just going to drag that through there. And usually it's better to just leave it alone than to mess with it. But I'm going to mess with it. See, I should have left it alone. It's too, too much now. So now we'll just make the other one match it. I should have left them. I know that much. Leave well enough alone. So that's that. We'll let that dry. So now I have black on my little belly here. So I'm going to grab my another dry brush and I'm going to just dip in my white and we're going to fix that up. And that might take a couple layers. Cover up our red here. You can go back and touch touch up if you get stuff where it don't belong. And that'll probably take a couple of touching ups. And let's see, we have to put our rust on our um, band. So I'm going to grab some rust. How are we doing on time, Courtney? Quarter after eight. Quarter after eight? Okay. Um, so I'm just using that liner again, and I'm just going to um, line out my um, band. And I have him resting on the table. I have my hand resting on him. And I'm just going to draw my brush towards me. And I can see where that band is. So you just want to paint your band this rust because then you can come back and paint it the red. And you just want your piece nice and steady because that's how you can get your nice steady outline. So I'm starting in, in, in the band and I'm merging over towards the edge. That way I can see where they meet up. Because if I if I just start here, I might I might be below it or above it. So I like to start in the band 
and then merge over and I can gradually see where I'm meeting up and it's at the perfect point. And that's just my way of doing it. And that way you don't get it too, too far over because you can go back and just keep bringing it until you get it to the right the right spot where they join up. Is that like a line there? Um, yes, there's a line there for the band. But if you go past it, you're going to be on the hat and you'll be able to see that. And then you have to go back and touch it up again with the black. So now we'll turn them and we'll do... Well, the other way, and I, I guess I do like to pull the brush towards me. And then I paint that out. Grab some more. And there, I dabbed it where it didn't need to be, so I'll have to touch that up later. I brushed it out. So he's looking pretty good. He's actually almost done. So it'll probably take another coat of the rust on the hat rim. And then you can paint the real red on there. And I'm just sticking with the um, liner brush. If you wanted, you could switch to a smaller round brush, but I'm just going to finish it out with this instead of dirtying another brush. It's not that big of an area. Red not cover alone the rust? Um, the red would cut um, so someone asked would the red not cover alone without the rust um, the red would cover it might take two or three extra coats to get it to cover though um, so you could do just the red it's just going to take more coats of it and it might not be as good of a red either is true of a red as the red that you're using, especially over the black. So that I'm going to wash out my brush, and then I have some red here yet. And let's see, it will go. Needs to dry just a minute. So we'll go back and touch up our white a little bit again. And I'm just using my little dry brush and go, got, um, touching up wherever there's where I got him all dirty here. While our rust is drying. And I got red down on 
his little snowman potty part here. So I want to touch that up so it doesn't look messy. And I just start away and then I work my way up to it. That way you're not getting the white all over the red. Or you'll just be going back and forth. Okay, so our rust is pretty dry. So I'm just going to go in our real red and um, paint our band red. See how that, that's nice and red already. If that rust wasn't under there, that would not be that red that quick. I mean, the best thing, I guess, is um, to try it without it and then try it with it, and then you'll see the difference. But there's a big difference. Um, Courtney asks if there's other colors that, that works well with. Um, red, red, red mainly. Red is just a, a problem color always. It's not as much of a problem as it was years ago, but it's better than it used to be. It covers better than it used to. But that rust is in the same family as the red, so it just helps it cover better. Huh? Well, that's good. So you guys will have to um, post pictures of yours when you get them painted. He's a, he's a um, post them in the group. Yes, he, he's a cute little fella. I also have the big one of him, although right now the arm mold is missing, so I got to do some searching. Um, Cordy asks, how tall is the big one? The big one is probably 16 inches tall. Um, Cordy asks if there's one in between these two. I'm not sure. There could be. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I know the cuddle, the, or the um, bundled up, they have the in-between size. Um, I don't know if this one has an in-between size or not. Actually, I think it does. Right. Courtney's saying the big one would be hard to ship because anything over a cubic foot is really expensive to ship. Um, I think there is a, a next size in between because I think there's a scene on. You can get them with a scene on them. So I'm just... Yeah, but he's he's big, and then there's one that's about this size. Um, the other one looks like they're whittled. Yes, it's called Papa Snowman. Yep. I don't think there's an in between. So I'm just um, lining out my red yet on the bottom, and if you get it on the band, the band extends onto the hat where you can tell that it doesn't belong there. You can go back and touch it up with the black. So this will still probably take the two coats of red, but if you didn't have the rust, you'd probably do, be doing five coats of red. And, and there's nothing wrong with that if you want to do that. Um, but I think it may, just makes a better red too. more of a true red. So he's coming right along. Courtney's yawning over there. Now I can see where I do have where I got that little bit of rust on his hat. I'm going to wash out my brush, and I'm going to see if I got some black on here somewhere that's still wet. 
and see if we can touch that up. So again, I'm starting up in my hat and I'm going to drag it towards my band so I can get it right where I want it. And then I'm going to come towards me and cover that dot up that I got on there right there. And I'll just brush that out and that'll dry good. And then I just want to look at it. So it's got a little white right there. So he's looking pretty darn good. Let's see. Um, Courtney asked if I paint his eyebrows. No, I didn't paint the eyebrows. Um, got the black on there. So at this point, you could seal him with your sealer. I like to, um, if you have a wooden spoon or something, you can stick it up inside. And then you spray your sealer. And then we had snow. Let's see, we got glitter and snow. Um, see, it, your snow is in your little container. And you can use a plastic knife or you can use your brush. And you have plenty. So I'm just going to use one of my little round brushes and I'm going to put snow wherever I think I want it. Um, I put it on his hat and on his broom and on his mitten. Yep, I think Cordy's going to move the camera up a little bit. And then I'll put this paper towel down so we can sprinkle some glitter. And that was also in your um, box in one of the containers, the white glitter. So you would do this after you had him sealed. And I'm just going to take my little round brush or if you have a like a plastic um, knife, you could do that. And we'll just you just put it on there how you want it. Just grab some and kind of dab it around like he was playing in the snow. And then you can take your glitter and then sprinkle your glitter right on your snow and it'll stick to it. That's after he's been sealed, yep. Um, put a little bit on his nose. I don't want to stink up Courtney's house, so I didn't. I didn't do it. And we'll put um, some on his hat. You have plenty of glitter, so put however much you want. And then we'll sprinkle some more glitter. Yeah, let's see, I think we'll put a little bit on our other mitten over here and on the broom. Yeah, we'll put a little bit on the bird's tail and on their little top of their head. And you don't have to put the snow on either if you don't want to. Whoa, got the whole container. And then we'll put a little bit going from the bird to the broom to the snowman. And this is the Duncan um, No Fire Snow. It's a ceramic product. Oh, there and there is glitter No Fire Snow, and I do kind of like that, so maybe we'll be including that in one of the boxes one of these times, too. So I'm just sprinkling my glitter on my snow here. And then you would want to let... Um, oh, we got to get some on his nose. So then you would want to let that dry overnight, and then you have a scarf in your in your box as well, and you can um, tie that on him tomorrow after the next day after that snow is dried because it'll smear all over otherwise. And if you wanted to give him a little bit of rosy cheeks, you could give him some little rosy cheeks too. Yes, the snow takes a few hours to dry, yep. Um, so then this is what he's going to look like after he's sealed and dried. The snow is hard, it gets hard, and the glitter sticks to it. And then you just tie your um, scarf on, just wrap it around and give one little tie, and there you have your cute little Jack, your snowman. So Courtney says we have a question. Oh, 
also um, someone did the color wash and Margarita did and she don't want that color so after well then she dry you dry brushed with a different color is that it oh um, you can have your color wash don't have to be the medium blue it can be um, if you use the navy that's okay he's just going to be um, he's just going to be the color of um, Jack instead of instead of the medium blue and it, but if you wanted him, um, you want him the medium blue, and you already color washed the navy, I would just, instead of color washing him, I would paint him um, with the medium blue and then dry brush him with the white. Yep, if you want him more of the medium blue, just paint him instead of color washing him with the medium blue, because that's going to be hard to get rid of that navy. Um, so just color, just paint him out with the medium blue and then dry brush him with the white. And then he'll be the medium medium blue color again. So I think that will be good for tonight. We'll finish um, Jack up. He doesn't have much to do. We'll just paint his little red button next week and paint his um, little bow tie and his eyes, add his snow and his glitter. And then our cuddle up, we can, you, if you want him not as antique looking as the cream colored one, the cream colored one you can paint with the French vanilla. Otherwise, if you don't want him that antique looking, you can paint him with the white and then paint his scarf and his hat with the barnyard red. And then we'll be able to finish him off and antique him with the gold. And then we'll be um, give them some glitter too. And then we'll be done with this box and your new boxes will be in the mail and ready for the following week. So I think we're on a good... Um, timeline here the way it looks if anyone has any questions as you're working away make sure you do wash the snow out of your brush because it'll get it in there and stay hard um, so you do want to make sure you wash that out but you want to always make sure you wash your brushes out good anyway you want to clean them up good so and and you want to when you're cleaning your brushes if you have your Harold's brush pad cleaner you can put that in the bottom you want to brush back and forth with your brushes because you want to get that out from up in your ferrule. You don't want to go up and down because that's going to jam your bristles up into your ferrule and break them off. So you want to brush back and forth. And that will help get that out of there. And then you can um, work it out with your hands too, your fingers. You can like um, groom it out. So now my snow is all out of there. And my brush is nice and clean. So now I'm also grooming my brush and I'm making a nice point I'm turning it so I get my point back in my brush and then you want to let it dry horizontally if you put it vertically all <laughs> excuse me <coughs> all that water is going to run back in your brush so let let them dry vertically so again take your brush and go back and forth don't go up and down because that's going to break all your bristles off go back and forth and then you can groom it get that at the point and that's how you can take good care of your brushes. Um, keeping them clean is really important. So I think that's it before I start a coughing jig here because I feel it coming. Have a good week, and we'll see you guys next week. Look for your boxes in the mail. Um, there is brush cleaner um, that make, uh, Mako and Duncan both have. You can clean your brushes with. I also use Dawn dish soap to clean my brushes. If your brushes get really dirty, about once every six months, I will take Murphy's Oil Soap and um, clean my brushes really well with that. I'll um, actually take the uh, Murphy's Oil Soap and squirt it on there and massage it in, massage it in there. And um, it really, if you have any any old paint in there, it really softens it and gets it out. But there's a um, brush cleaner for brushes that works great too. Um, Cardi says we'll do a video on that at some point. And we do have the brush, um, the brush cleaner, which is um, good. There's usually a conditioner in those that helps keep them soft, too. So that's about it for this week. Have a good week, you guys, and have fun painting. Look for your boxes next week. We have a few. If um, anyone wants to get one yet, let us know, or you can check out on the website. I think Courtney has one-time purchases of them. Or you can subscribe as well. So have fun. See you next week.